Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we are going to be looking at overclocking your CPU using basic BIOS and UEFI BIOS. This will cover the principles and methodologies of overclocking and is not meant to be a specific guide for specific numbers on CPUs, so please ask us for detailed support on CPU specific questions and apply these basics to your overclocking endeavors. Check the description of this video for the full, highly detailed overview of overclocking where we explain what it is why you can even do it to begin with and how to do it so uh, I've also posted a GPU overclocking overview video so if you're trying to overclock your GPU check out that video as well now with CPUs if you are an absolute beginner I'd recommend reading that primer first with that said there are a few key elements of CPU overclocking that should most concern you uh, most of which are terminology but there's certainly skill involved too it just depends on how far you want to push it as far as BIOS goes, most modern boards will certainly have UEFI BIOS or Visual BIOS in Intel's case. Your input will largely be the same in both Classic and UEFI BIOS. Uh, you'll most likely be interested in any overclocking utilities that your board has as well. For me, the tab that uh, that is called AI Tweaker, MSI also has an OC Genie utility, ASUS has AI Tweaking, AS Rock has their own proprietary overclocking tab, and they're all primarily the same at the end of the day. Some are certainly more detailed than others. To overclock only your CPU, depending on which CPU you have, you'll be modifying multipliers, sometimes called the core ratio, and uh, you'll also be incrementing the base clock speed, potentially, depending on the CPU, and the voltage. Here's how they all work together. The internal clock rate, which is your CPU speed, the uh, number often advertised as x.x .x gigahertz, 2.9 gigahertz, the in that is called the internal clock rate. This is the product of the external clock rate, which is the base clock, or BCLK, or bus speed, uh, or any number of other synonyms really and uh, it's that BCLK multiplied with the multipliers and that equates the internal clock rate so if we have a BCLK of say 133 megahertz like a uh, first gen i7 would have and a multiplier of 22x like a first gen i7 would have then your internal clock frequency will be in the range of 2900 megahertz ish or 2.9 gigahertz Ivy Bridge will lean toward higher multipliers, often in the 30s or 40s, but remain most stable at lower core clocks, like 100 to 105 megahertz. That's pretty stable. The reason for this is because Intel has opted for a uh, a lower core clock or base clock or whatever you want to call it, bus speed, because that consumes less power. It will be less hot as a result and you can just rely on multipliers which now are getting increasingly higher with every iteration of CPU. Uh, this means you don't manipulate the BCLK quite as much in newer CPUs for Intel anyway and you can often rely heavily on again multipliers for basic overclocking but the principles for all overclocking are the same. AMD CPUs still use hypertransport overclocking and all forms of other overclocking uh, but we will cover that in more depth if you have specific questions so you will be messing with the uh, the actual base clock of AMD CPUs if you want to push it as much as possible and really optimize it but for the most part stick with the multipliers the objective of what you're actually trying to achieve with mo with overclocking is quite simple after reading the detailed article you will be aware that overclocking serves primarily to speed up multi-threaded applications that can utilize more processing power not all games will take advantage of this so please uh, keep games in mind if that is what you're focusing on and keep also in mind that you may not see a noticeable improvement or even any FPS improvement at all from overclocking it really depends on the game encoding uh, rendering and things of that nature will certainly see an advantage because they will uh, they're not quite as bottlenecked as games are it's all just it's it's all a game really <laughs> um, of getting what you paid for the chip can often do more than stock settings and the reason for this is covered in the article and primer um, but to go over it very rapidly it's because Intel and AMD will bin out their chips to be the most stable common denominator which means it will be slower so most chips are clocked to slower speeds to ensure stability with their customers and uh, and then it's your job basically to get as much out of that chip as possible the methodology here is simple you'll incrementally increase the multipliers or BCLK each time you boot into Windows 
and uh, or well before you boot into Windows obviously and each time you do boot into it you need to check for stability most modern systems will initiate a thermal shutdown if things get too hot this is an attempt to preserve the CPU so don't freak out if it happens it's probably a good thing because it's protecting you most likely any freezing or shutdowns are an indication of volatility in the CPU's overclocked settings and you should probably step it back a little bit I would recommend running Prime 95 to run torture tests on as many threads as possible. This should provoke a failure in a contained environment if the settings are unstable, and if the CPU seems to be surviving, you may be able to continue to increment those multipliers and BCLK a bit further. Keep running this test every time you increase things because you'll want to provoke that failure as soon as possible. That way it's not hap it doesn't happen in the middle of something important. Once you find the threshold at which the system becomes unstable, it is time to start considering voltage modifications or decreasing the OC levels. Those are your two options. You can either step it back or increase voltage. You have to be careful with increasing voltage since it has the potential to cause a catastrophic failure in your CPU if it is overvolted. But if you stay within the guidelines for your CPU, you should be fine. Look up guides or ask us for specific help, and uh, I'd suggest to do this on our forums where you'll get more responses more quickly. Increasing voltage will increase stability and allow you to get those last few bits out of your clock rate or multipliers, and the amped up power will help you help the CPU itself. Uh, the best way really to explain it is that it more voltage will help the CPU keep up with itself. It, it increases the bandwidth, so to speak, of the gates on the CPU. Um, so with that in mind, it is going to generate more heat because of course there's more voltage. So you need to very carefully monitor the temperatures using core temp if you're in Windows. This is an excellent program or thermal probes. Core temp should read directly from the CPU, and some UEFI BIOS options will also be able to read directly to Windows using software that ships with your motherboard. So you'll want to monitor that. Thermal probes are a hardware option if that is more interesting to you. That is the basic overview of CPU overclocking. If you're still confused or have more qu questions, there are certainly tons of numbers thrown at you with these higher end boards especially this Asus ROG board I've messed with that is running on uh, on an AMD processor. So there's definitely a lot to learn, um, but for the most part it is very simple as far as multipliers go. You can certainly get 4 gigahertz out of almost any CPU these days without much problem at all. Um, and that is with even a stock heat sink but with that said, let me issue a quick disclaimer. Please note that overclocking will often... Uh, I'm actually not aware of any any uh, times when this isn't true, it will void your warranty, so do not overclock if you are afraid to pay for a replacement. But don't be, don't let that scare you away from overclocking either, just do it responsibly, do it in increments as I have said a hundred times now, there's a reason for that because it is very important. Just be patient, do it a little bit at a time and you'll find a great stable setting for your CPU and be able to get a little bit more power out of it. So with that, uh, please let me know if you have questions, comment to like, and subscribe as always for more videos like this. Check our forums for the very responsive staff that we have who will help you with m almost any question you have about CPUs and overclocking. And I'll see you guys next time.